Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanna to walk you through some of my favorite voicings that I use generally within the context of a 251. So these are actually some of my favorite voicings which I use generally when either comping for others or playing solo piano. And I think you're gonna leave this video with some really awesome tools. All right, without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So this first set of voicings I'm gonna be showing you here today is going from five to one. So we've got the five chord, which in this case is a B flat 13 with a flat nine, going to an E flat major six nine, okay? So let's talk about what those voicings actually are and what that all means. Now, first of all, these are rootless voicings. So if you don't know what that means, basically it just means that they don't have the root of the chord or the one actually in the chord at the bottom. So when I play this B flat 13 with the flat nine, I actually then go and hit the bass note there just so you can hear what this chord is actually meant to sound like, okay? So I'm playing the root so you can hear the voicing over the root. Now, oftentimes common practice dictates that a voicing is actually strongest if it doesn't have repeated notes. But as I've said before in this channel, that's not necessarily something I completely agree with in many cases. So this voicing is actually one of my favorites and it actually has a couple repeated notes. So let's just take a look at it. So we've got flat seven, three, 13. Then we've got flat nine, and then three and 13 again on top. So despite having that extra three and 13 in the top, to me, this is a great, great voicing. So where do we go from there? Well, we go to an E flat major six, nine, okay? Now, the reason I chose this one is because yet again, it's another case where I actually think it sounds really nice having these repeated notes. So we've got three, six, nine, and then in the right hand, we've got six, nine, and then five on top, okay? So that's a really pretty chord to me. Now, something that we should talk about here is why these two chords sound good one after the other. In my opinion, a big part of that is because we've got this nice melody on top. We're going from G, to B flat. So essentially we're going from 13 in the B flat chord to five, we're resolving to five with the E flat major. You may even recognize this sound from a song like Stomping at the Savoy, right? We've got. So we've got that nice little melody structure on the very top. So as usual, make sure to check these out in all keys if you can. Um, the more keys you learn these voicings in and these little progressions in, the more freedom you're gonna have using them in different songs. All right, now the next structure I wanna show you is actually for a full two, five, one. And this is really actually pretty easy and I love how this sounds. So let's do this one in the key of C. So that means our two, five, one is D minor to G7 to C major, right? So the way this first D chord is structured is interesting. We've got one, 11, flat seven, flat three and five, okay? So this is really somewhat of a D minor 11 chord here. And then this is how this works. We actually just move the chord up in half steps and that's it. So, so D minor, G7. Okay, so this is interesting, right? You wouldn't really play this chord as a G7 by itself, but this chord essentially works as a passing chord from the D minor to the C major seven here, okay? Now, of course, if we take a look at this last C major chord, we've got three, six, nine, five, seven on top. So in context, that sounds like this. So that's another one of my favorite two, five, one voicing structures right there. Now the third voicing structure we're gonna look at here is yet another two, five, one, and this is actually going to be more of a block chord structure. So we're gonna do this one in the key of E flat. We've got F minor, right, to B flat seven, to E flat major, okay? So this is what the chords look like. So for the F minor, we've actually got F minor nine. We've got nine, flat three, five, 
flat seven and nine, okay? Now I said this was a block chord structure, right? So that's because we've got a closed voicing, meaning these inner notes are all built from bottom to top here. We're not taking them and spreading them out across the keyboard. And we've actually got that top note doubled directly beneath the chord. So again, nine, flat three, five, flat seven, and nine again on top. Now for the next chord, we've got another B flat 13 with a flat nine. So we've got 13, flat seven, flat nine, three, 13, okay? So we're doubling this 13 right below. And then for our E flat major, this is what we've got. We've got nine, three, five, major seven, and nine. So we've got an E flat major nine here. So let's take a look at all three of those. So those are three of my favorite ways to conquer two five ones from the perspective of voicings. So I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you try this stuff in all keys if you have the time. Each key you work on is going to get that much easier. So going from the first key to the second might be a little bit tricky, but then the third key will be easier. And by the time you get to the fifth or sixth, it's gonna be really moving much more quickly. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up to help me move up in the YouTube algorithm. And additionally, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And also, if you're actually gonna be working on these and you follow me on Instagram, at Noah Kelman, feel free to post a video of yourself and tag me. I would love to see how you're doing with these voicings. As always, if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe and clicking the little bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss any more videos just like this one. Thanks so much and I will see you all next week.